Hi everyone, uh, Muso here. Today's lesson is going to be about magnetism. We're only going to cover the basics of magnetism in this video. Uh, primarily what a magnet is and magnetic fields. Uh, one of the more important things to get about magnetism is something that is often not discussed once we define it. And it is something that is often forgotten but is actually crucial. And it's this top line right here that uh, magnetism is indeed a force that exists between moving charges. A lot of folks don't quite realize that it takes a moving charge to create a magnetic field. Because most bar magnets that you look at, you don't worry about a current running through them or it having a, a extra electrostatic charge. Uh, because it doesn't. It's, it's electrically neutral. Uh, however, what ends up happening, and I'm not going to get into too much detail, uh, but what ends up happening is the metal that is used, the material that is used, to create the magnet actually has some free roaming electrons in there and uh, based on their spin uh, and the alignment of their spin they'll create a magnetic field. It's pretty nifty. Uh, it will come into play in higher levels of physics. Keep that in mind. Uh, so because of that and the fact that it's dealing with charge uh, there's some crucial stuff here we got to pick up. For example when we have a charge that's not moving it's not going to create a magnetic field. And as a result, stationary charges create electric field only. Uh, don't forget, positive charge has electric field. Again, I'm talking about electric field here, not magnetic field yet. Uh, positive charge has electric field outward. And negative charge has electric field inward. That will be true if the charge is moving or not. If it's not moving, there will be no additional magnetic field. That said, when it is moving, moving charge, you get both the electric field and the magnetic field. For this lesson we're only going to look at the magnetic field. Let me define a few terms that you're going to hear often. Uh, ferromagnetic, permanent magnet, and electromagnet. A ferromagnetic material, uh, commonly iron but not only iron, may form term, uh, temporary or permanent magnets when they're placed in uh, outside the magnetic field. You've probably experienced this at some point in time in your life. It's typical in elementary classrooms where you take a paper clip or a nail and you run a magnet along it. That paper clip or nail, once you move it away from the magnet, is then turns into a magnet itself. It might be a weak magnet and it probably won't be a magnet for a very long time, but it is magnetic for, for some period of time. And that's because the material is made up of is ferromagnetic, which basically means it can become magnetized. A permanent magnet is made up of ferromagnetic material, but it's now material that can actually become magnetized for a really long time. So we call it permanent. It's not truly permanent. Some magnets are more permanent than others and might last many years, and other magnets are permanent enough where they last for a good practical application, but eventually lose their magnetism. If they lose their magnetism, you can run it through a magnetizer, and typically you can bring the magnetism back. Um, so permanent isn't quite the right word to use, but it's definitely more permanent than, say, temporary. And then finally, you have an electromagnet, which is any wire that has current running in it. Uh, you typically find electromagnets arranged in a place that'll a way that'll make the magnetic field more conducive, like a coil. But ultimately, if there's current running through the wire, it's moving charge, that wire creates a magnetic field, so it actually turns into a magnet. You find electromagnets used in any application in which you want to control the magnetism, either the value or the direction. Also, if you're interested in how magnets are made, because all magnets have to be manufactured, uh, I encourage you to look at this YouTube video. It's a pretty interesting video. I'm not going to play it right now. Just take note of the URL and go ahead and check it out. So let's talk about magnetic field. So all magnets all magnets, and I'll talk about this on the next slide, but I'll talk about it right now loosely. All magnets have two opposing poles, or opposite poles. You have your south and your north. You will never find a magnet that has only one, and you'll never have a, find a magnet that has both of one and not any of the either. You're going to have a south, and you're going to have a north. And interesting thing is, when you take a compass and you run it along that magnetic field, you find out that that compass will always be pointing not necessarily directly at one of the poles, but along the field lines created by the poles, which more or less tells you where the north and south poles are. Uh, but if you watch these compasses down here, you'll see the needle is always going to be along these field lines. And so these lines that are drawn here, again, are called field lines, and there's going to be an infinite number of them representing the magnetic field surrounding the magnet. 
And if you look at these top diagrams, you can actually have a ferromagnetic uh, material such as iron uh, placed here, and it will uh, basically align itself along several of these magnetic field lines. And you can see where you have greatest concentration of the iron, and that's where the poles will be, that's where the magnetic field is strongest, which is always at the poles. Now, um, you should, when you draw your field lines, and I'm going to have uh, more def uh, better definition on the uh, slides in a moment, but when you draw these field lines, you should always have it leaving a pole, wrapping around, and not just stopping at the next pole, but actually going right through the magnet, because uh, it turns out that the magnetic field inside the bar magnet is does exist. It's not zero. Don't confuse it with, say, an electric field of a conductor. Hopefully you understand that the electric field inside a conductor is zero. It's not true for magnetic field. There will be a magnetic field inside the material as well. So let's kind of define this a little bit better. Uh, first, uh, when I, like I said, magnets always have two poles. So we use the word dipole for that, uh, which basically means they have two poles. And in the case of a magnet, you have a north end and a south end. Uh, yes, it's true. Opposite poles will attract and like poles will repel. So north will, will seek out south and it will repel north. And uh, you can never create a magnet with just a north or a south pole. That would be considered a monopole. And, uh, you know, there are uh, areas in science that say it can exist. It's just never been observed either through nature or experimentation. So some rules for magnetic field lines. They're always going to leave the north pole and head to the south pole. So when you draw your field lines, it's uh, appropriate to start at the north and then curve it around to the south, especially if it's just a bar magnet. But like I said earlier, don't just stop here. Go all the way through that magnet so you can show that we know that it's a continuous field that connects and give it an arrowhead. So if it's leaving the north and approaching the south, and the way I just drew this one, it would be clockwise. Uh, and of course, that there, there are many of these field lines. So we can do another one over here. And then it's going to go, it's going to go through that bar and it's going to return back to that north pole. And again, uh, give an arrowhead. So in this example on the left loop, it's leaving the north and heading to the south, so it's going to be counterclockwise. Uh, magnetic field lines are vectors, so direction is important. And uh, the field itself is uh, denoted by the capital letter B. Recall for electric field, it's the capital letter E. For the magnetic field, it's the capital letter B. And your unit for magnetism, or uh, magnetic field, is the Tesla, uh, capital T. A couple rules that are true for magnetic field lines that I don't have written out in text. It's true. The same rules are true for magnetic field lines as they are for electric field lines. Your field lines will never cross over each other. They will either approach each other and connect, or approach each other and rebel away, repel away, or bend away, I should say, like an asymptote. Where your field lines are closest is where you have greatest strength. And you can see relative strength for magnets based on the number of field lines drawn. So if you have a really strong magnet, you'll see more field lines drawn than maybe a weaker magnet. Now, earlier I said that the uh, compass will always point uh, along the field lines. Well, it turns out that a compass, uh, it's really the north needle of the compass that you're seeing. So it's what, what, what we call north. It, it's north because it's the north needle, uh, the north part of the needle. And so really, remember, North seeks out south. So an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when you're using a compass here, in, say in North America, and it's pointing to what you would call north, that's what we call geographic north. In reality, it's actually a magnetic south pole because again, the north pole of the compass will want to point towards a magnetic south. North seeks out south. So while we call the uh, place where Santa lives, the North Pole, it's actually the magnetic South Pole. And so, yes, it is true. The Earth is basically one really huge bar magnet. Uh, it's because of that whole core that is made up of m various different ferromagnetic metals uh, moving around all the time creates this massive magnetic field around our planet. And it's really interesting. And I encourage you to check out some other videos that uh, help show this a little bit more. Um, but this magnetic field helps protect us from a lot of the sun's radiation and high energy uh, particles that could otherwise deem life 
uh, impossible here on our planet. So we're very fortunate to have this magnetic field. But again, understand that our geographic North Pole is actually Earth's magnetic South Pole. And so I do want to just show you a few scenarios where we can have field lines drawn. For example, here we have a north and a south bar magnet, and then another uh, bar magnet, but this time we have the south on the left and the north on the right. And uh, when we do that, you do have your north seeking out your south for the bar magnets themselves. Uh, however, you won't have field lines in the center region here because these two south poles are basically repelling each other. The field lines will simply just not cross over. And so you're going to have a very weak to zero field in the middle here. Uh, in this scenario right here, it's the same situation, but the North Pole now is the pole that is closest uh, closest to each other. And so it's going to look like the same orientation of field lines. However, now the arrows are pointed in simply the other direction. So in this example here, your field lines are just pointed outwards. So it looks a lot like this guy here. The lines never cross over here, so we get a zero magnetic field in the center. And then finally, we can have like poles near or opposite poles near each other. And here's where you're going to see field from the north pole of one magnet seeking out its own south pole. However, there will also be field lines seeking out the south pole of the magnet nearby. So you're going to have just kind of this interesting looking setup for magnetic field where you're going to get your greatest strength at your poles still. Uh, however, in this region now, in between the two magnets, it's, it's more or less uniform. And uh, just a little heads up, uniform magnetic field is always going to be parallel arrows. So if we have a large enough region of space that, say, this is the North Pole and that's the South Pole, and then we have another magnet here, we have a South Pole and a North Pole here, that f those field lines will leave that North Pole to that South Pole in a relative uniform manner, so the field is equal throughout this region. Lastly, I just want to show you this video from St. Mary's Physics. It's a pretty nifty video where they're basically suspending a ferromagnetic material in a solution to see more or less a three-dimensional representation of field. And so they're sticking a magnet in here. And uh, I'm assuming it's iron that's in the fluid. And that iron is aligning to the poles. And so once again, you can see your greatest strength in this pole area. Kill that audio. There we go. You see the greatest strength in this pole area, for sure. Okay. Um, you see iron in this middle region, which means there's field in the middle, which helps uh, confirm that field does exist in the metal, the magnet itself. But then if you look carefully enough, you're going to see some field lines. Oh, sorry, it, killed, it kicked out on me here. Let me just skip ahead to the end of that. Um, but if you look carefully enough towards the end of this video, once I get there, you'll see the field does tend to arrange a little bit in a... Oh, well, you can see it now. I don't even know it to the end. Let me just pause this. You'll see the field lines arrange, seeking each other's poles out. So you see these curving lines here. You see it up here, too. But you also see some field out here towards the ends, which indicates that... It, it, it's not all going to always tightly wrap back around to the south. Perhaps this is interacting with Earth's magnetic field out here, or just it's weaker, so gravity is pulling the, the iron down more than the field can allow it to arrange. And that's it for your introduction to magnetism. Thank you.